Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. As you guys know, every year we raise money for the Spot Project in Freshly Grounded. Freshly Grounded was actually started because of um, the Spot Project, because Sam and I met in Gambia and then I decided that I wanted to do a podcast and he kind of, I convinced him and it all started in Gambia. And so the Spot Project has a very, very special place in our hearts and in your guys' hearts, because every year you guys donate so much money uh, to the Spot Project, which is so amazing. Um, and... We we're going again, and we, every year we donate. We we sorry, we fundraise for the Spot Project, and um, this year what they're doing is something very very special. The Spot Project are going to build a girls' school in Gambia. Now, in the episode, he's going to speak about the importance of the girls' school. But just to give you guys kind of a roundup of it, um, Alhamdulillah, the boys' um, school for the orphans has been going really really well, as you guys can see uh, on the Spot Project Instagram and through through their videos, and um, they basically teach secular studies as well as Quran and Sunnah uh, to the children uh, as well as hygiene and as well as treating them amazingly and I've been a first hand um, viewer of this um, I've seen it uh, multiple times when I've been able to uh, Alhamdulillah go to Gambia now what is the girls school about and um, the answer is that they're going to build a, another school and this is going to be uh, purely for girls um, where they can teach Quran and Sunnah and secular studies to girls so that they can grow up and have the kind of right education to inshallah uh, get employment. Um, and on top of that, uh, Abu Bakr mentions in this episode about how unfortunately um, there was news in the media of a lot of people kind of abusing young girls and stuff um, co coming from like foreign countries to Gambia to like uh, take advantage of of, of poor young girls. Um, and he goes into that a bit. And rest assured that I've seen such amazing stuff from the Spot Project where safety, precaution, uh, education and um, awareness is like at the top of the list. It's a really, really, really cool project, uh, guys. And we've set the target at £10,000. Uh, but I hope that we can smash that this month. And the reason I hope we can smash that is because every year, in the first year Fresh Grounded was around, we raised around £5,000. In the second year, we raised around 8000 And in the third year, we raised just under 10000 I think it was like 9500 So, inshallah, as Fresh Grounded has grown year on year, I'm hoping that this year we can smash that smash that £10,000 target. Uh, so, everyone who's watching this, everyone who's listening, click on the link in the bio or go to spotproject.org forward slash Freshly Grounded. And even if you can just donate a fiver, uh, it means the, the world. And I mentioned in the episode that if everybody who listens to this... Um, donated just a five art, which is the minimum amount, I think, um, we would actually have enough money to actually build the entire girls' school, which is like £70,000. Um, so so please don't don't belittle how much of a difference you can make. Uh, with that being said, guys, this is Freshly Grounded with Abu Bakr Islam. Let's get into it. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I... Welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit. The brand new podcast. And after that bit? My best friends, Facebook and Sam. Really? So, I guess. Um, yeah, so, so okay, so we're on. So the first thing I was going to actually mention to you is that it's funny because um, we obviously, we hadn't planned to do this episode in, much in advance, but uh, Sam and I were meant to be in Gambia right now. The dates were that we were going to be there until... Um, the 25th, which is another couple of days, another two, another three days, we would have been in Gambia. We would have just got there yesterday. Hmm. Yeah, for real. Yeah, but obviously, we, we plan on a lot of plans, innit? Yeah, well, like, even me, I shouldn't have been in Gambia from um, the 11th of April, but subhanAllah, well, like, I could never have predicted that I'd be in the situation now because we had so many things that we were meant to do. Um, the last time I was in Gambia, <clears throat> I think I left Gambia at the end of January, and I thought to myself, you know what, I'll be back here in like two months anyway, so. The little things that I had left to do, I just thought when I get back, I'll just I'll just finalize them then. But like you said, you plan, but a lot of is the best of planners, man. Are you having to like implement much in the in the school right now because of coronavirus? But I know that generally in Ga in in Africa, um, the the um, cases of coronavirus are, are substantially lower uh, than kind of here and in Europe and in America and stuff. But have you had to kind of implement some extra health and safety stuff? Yeah, in regards to the school. Um, you know, Gambia's in a state of emergency at the moment. So 
we had to like um, completely kind of shut down all our operations because all the schools and stuff are meant to be closed. So what we did was there's some of the kids who have got like, you know, family members that they can go back to. So we sent a few of the kids home. But majority of them are still there because obviously many of them ain't got nowhere to go. And if they did go to extended extended family members, the, the family members would struggle to look after them, feed them, etc. So what we done was we just kind of like stopped all the classes. Um, we stopped calling that a dan and all that type of stuff because obviously the government said no masjid should be, um, you know, no matches should be in operation or what have you. So the kids are still there. They're still just still like doing their, their Quran and they're just, they're just relaxing. Apart from that, what we had to do is like the cleaners, the outside staff who, are, who, don't, who don't live in the school, we just completely stopped them from coming. Yeah, we completely stopped them from coming. So we told them that, you know, like the cleaners, we, alhamdulillah, we're still paying them and stuff. But we told them that for the next couple of months that you can't come back to the school because we can't afford to have people coming in and out of the school just in case of this um, coronavirus. So it's affected us, but not dramatically, not like, like here in the UK, so to speak, like in regards to the people in the school anyway. How has it affected things operationally? Because uh, I've been getting a lot of messages from a lot of um, various organisations, especially... Um, charity organisations that this has like really affected them um, well actually more so from smaller charities to be honest uh, there's, a, there's a charity that I was there's a guy I had on podcast the, the other day uh, he's a doctor and he's a kind of like a supporter of Ali Shara which is a, a very small charity and it's affected them uh, quite substantially so what's it looking like kind of for spot yeah it's affected us as well you know because many people who are like doing direct debits and stuff many of them have cancelled obviously due to the circumstances and we understand that we get it you know what i mean well what can you do if people can't afford it then they can't afford it so it's affected us um whereas maybe bigger charities it might be a bit different because they've got a bigger um income in they got uh, more money coming into their um charity but it has affected us, but I'm not going to say that it stopped up our, our operations, that I'll be telling you, I'll, I'll be lying. Alhamdulillah, even though all of this has happened, Allah still gives us the opportunity to help people here in the UK the other day. You know, we've done the um, coronavirus um, um, distribution, the other day, COVID-19 distribution, where we distributed over 150 food packs. And that was an amazing thing to do. Doing something in the UK, I was really, we were really happy about that as an organisation and to help people on the ground here, because obviously we're UK-based charity anyway. So Alhamdulillah, yeah, it has affected us, but that hasn't um, put us in, in low spirits. We're still working hard. We're still trying to get through this, this trial and tribulation at the moment and still trying to push forward in the work that we're doing. One of the things, though, I would say is that, you know, normally in Gambia, we do a big distribution um, every Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, we, 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 were, we, we had a campaign where we, we advertised, like they say, about two months ago, where we were telling people, raise £3,000 and come to Gambia this Ramadan. So that was a little bit disappointing because, alhamdulillah, a lot of people did raise the money and they wanted to come out to Gambia. So I, I, I felt like we kind of let them down, but it's, it's completely out of our hands. But never, nevertheless, we still were able to send over £16,000 to the Gambia. And inshallah, the auntie, you know, Khadida, she's going to be starting her distribution hopefully this weekend. So, you know, the work, the work, the work don't stop, alhamdulillah. Let's talk about Ramadan. So, um Every year Ramadan, um, you know, we try our best to kind of uh, push forward with spot um, in raising money um, so that and I'm talking about kind of officially grounded here in in kind of um, trying to ensure that whatever it is that is next needed, uh, whether that's kind of maintenance or, or, or a new project that we can kind of uh, our, our followers can help us in raising that money. And subhanAllah, bro, every year uh, we're amazed by the, the people who listen to Freshly Grounded, uh, how much they, they're they passionate about spot. And I think it's the, it's the, it's the one kind of, um, it's the one, it's the one affiliation that we have had as Freshly Grounded since the very beginning in that Freshly Grounded, as we always mentioned, was born from our time in Gambia that's where I met Sam and that's where we kind of hit it off and we came back and I decided I said to him look let's do a podcast together so um, and I think that because there's that genuine story the listeners feel like they've been on the journey with Spot from the beginning as well as with Freshly Grounded and so likewise this year is, is no different and inshallah we're going to be raising money um, for Spot um, but, but what, it, what is it exactly because I know this is, is, is kind of like a new project that we're going to be we're going to be kicking off so what is it exactly that, that we're looking to raise money for this year firstly I want to say Jazakallah Khayyam for everyone on Freshly Grounded because wallahi like every Ramadan you've made a big impact in our organisation like you said Alhamdulillah you and Sam met each other in Gambia 
at the same time you don't owe spot anything you know what i mean you you still built your 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 brand your 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 podcast from the ground up and that took a lot of work and that had nothing to do with us you know but i would like to say definitely just like a lot of time because the freshly grounded supporters will lie they have contributed every single year you lot have done a fundraiser for spot and it's made a big it's made a big bit made a big impact on the ground so we need this continued support from freshly grounded honestly because it makes a, a big impact in our organization so this year Inshallah Zayla, one of the main things that we want to um, fundraise for is for a girls' school. You know, initially when we first um, started um, Spot Academy, the intention was it was going to be a school for boys and girls. So when we started the school and we started enrolling boys and we saw some of the challenges that we, we encountered, because you have to remember, bro, we've never done this before. So we plan to the best of our ability, but some of, some of the things that we came across that we never thought we would be dealing with, you know, so the more we started getting into the work, the more we realised that, you know what, it would be very difficult to make this school um, a boarding school or for boys and girls. It would be very difficult. So then we decided, you no, know, we will focus on the boys' school, try and, you know, um, get everything running smooth. And then, inshallah, if Allah wills, then we will get to a stage that we can um, do the same thing for girls. So it's always been in the back of our mind that, you know, we want to we, we wanted to build a girls school because we've got so many girls in our village so many girls in our community who are suffering and they've got no no school for themselves that they can go to improve their life benefit and you know for spot academy in our village it stands out like a sore thumb so when people see the boys a lot it affects them because alhamdulillah all our kids are fresh in our school you know they've got the best of everything that we can provide possible you know so when we see so when a lot of the girls in the community see the boys i can see them not not that not that they're jealous of course they wouldn't be jealous but they will feel like why hasn't why hasn't nothing been done for us you know so this is why we've made it our main intention this year to um focus on building a girls school and one thing i wanted to mention that i don't want to forget about is that subhanallah i remember i think it was in january um a newspaper article i don't want to mention the, the name of the newspaper i brought out an article uh, mentioning that you know a lot of um, paedophiles and sex offenders are going to Gambia and they're like you know mistreating young kids and when you look to the article I saw many pictures with young little girls and to be honest with you face I've seen it with my own eyes I've seen it with my own eyes you go to the beach if you go to the beach in the tourist areas and stuff like that you see these little girls with these old men and stuff like that and it hurts me bro it hurts me because you can't do anything you know at that present time you can't do anything so for us it's so important for us to um, have something that we can use to, to help these girls because well, like, one of the biggest problems is obviously poverty. Poverty is a problem and a lot of the people in the Gambia, so, sorry to say this, they're like, they don't really know what's going on around the world. So when you've got some of these um, foreigners coming to the country saying, oh, you know what, let me take your little son or let me take your daughter to the shop, let me buy them sweets, they're going to be like, go, go and take, take them then, you're going to buy them something for free? You can take them. Not thinking that some of these people are sex offenders, they're paedophiles and stuff like that. So this is a big problem that we encounter in the Gambia, if I'm, if I'm honest with you. It is definitely a problem. And it's easy for people to come there and do that because it's like, you know, Gambia is a very safe place. You know, there's no terrorism, there's no violence or anything like that. And, you know, it's easy for someone with bad intentions to come and to come there and mistreat people. And, bro, I know even you've been to you've seen things, you know, you come to Gambia, you see some things and it's very like, you know, it's very daunting to see. So now we want to, you know, make an impact on the ground by building a girl's school and using that as an example to let people know that how girls should be treated in the Gambia and also educating them. Not only that we want that girl's school to be there, we want to educate our whole community. We want it to be like a multi-purpose centre as well, where we can invite the women in our community, the women in our village and educate them. Tell them about things, what's going on around the world. Like these people come into our village, you're thinking they got good intentions. Some of them are penophile sex offenders. Some of them are trying to abuse your kids and all this type of stuff. And they're giving you a bit of money, but you're not realising what their real intention is. Also, we want to make sure that our, our village is an is a educated village, bro. You know, we want to be able to offer services to the people in our village, like, for example, teaching them, you know, how to read, how to write, teaching them how to use computers. Bro, I'm telling you, a lot of people don't even know how to send an email. You know what I mean? We're in 2020, bro. You don't know how to send an email. It's very difficult. But they don't have the facilities to this technology. So I believe, inshallah, if we're able to build this girls' school, the women in our, vi in our village, 
are going to have something that they can hold on to strong because we're going to be able to educate that whole community, inshallah. So this is our main goal, this Ramadan. One of our main goals, anyway, to um, build a girls' school. I can imagine Auntie Khadija is very uh, excited about that. Yeah, obviously, bro, because this is she's she's been fighting for this from from the, from the jump. You know that we need to do do more for women because you have to remember before I started working with Khadija, she's been on the ground for a long time, bro. She's been doing this for like over ten years. Do you know what I mean? Like so. I've just we've just come in like the last three four years but she's been doing this on our own for the longest sending containers distributing food going up and down it's not easy you know she's been doing a lot so alhamdulillah um yeah, yeah, yeah. no problem so, um so uh, uh for those listening if they just saw a cut kind of it was just a bit of a technical issue but um we're back on um what I wanted to ask, bro, is this, um, just so I can vision it, um, this girl school, is it going to go in the village, in them four walls? Or how's it going No, bro, work? you see, okay, you see where the school is, yeah? yeah. Um, I don't know if you can maybe edit this clip and put, I can maybe send you a drone footage, um, a recent drone footage. You'll see, you see where the sleeping area is? Behind yes, the sleeping yeah, area, yeah. we purchased the land behind the sleeping area. So literally... The school is gonna be the wall. The wall, it's only one wall gonna be separating the boys' school and the girls' school. Do you understand? I understand. So I understand. it's 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 literally on our doorstep. It's just next door. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And um, how how? Okay, so I want to know, and I know obviously um, you're probably not expecting any, this much, but what is like the goal where? If we can raise X amount, we can make like a substantial difference or even like literally get this thing up and running. Yeah, bro. Look, at the end of the day, if you're, what are you talking about? Freshly grounded? No, no. I'm just talking about in general, oh, right? The, the campaign. This, the um, obviously, yeah. our aim our aim was to raise like 70,000 to build the school. That was our aim, like to complete the first floor and to bring it up to the standards that we do. And well, like, for me, I tell you this now, Faisal, because obviously we've got a bit of experience with the building now and stuff like that. And we've, you know, through the process of building Spot Academy, we've made loads of mistakes, had bad contractors. We've learned a lot of stuff. So I honestly believe the way we're going to build this girl school is going to look better than what we've already got. You know, the template that we're using, the what the builders that we've got, it's going to be like, mashallah, I honestly believe it's going to be it's going to be better than what we already have, you know, because everything's going to be state of the art. And that's our, that's our, that's our angle, you know. We can that's hard to imagine because the school that you guys have at the moment is phenomenal. Like the glass, I remember the, when you first like, uh, was t- talking about the idea of like the glass windows and stuff. And then when, when I actually went to see it, you know, that was actually there, like where, it, when you go up, sta- up the stairs and then there's kind of those like transparent doors and stuff like that. So it's hard to imagine a building that looks even nicer than that. But you know what it is? It's like, you have to remember, when we were first building, you, we didn't have all the money to build. So right. we're always going by step by step, step by step. So some mist- a lot of mis- when you do work like that, bro, to be honest with you, a lot of mistakes, you, you encounter a lot of mistakes. Let me give you an example. You might have a building team here, they start the work. The money runs out. So your team is sitting there thinking, what's going on? They go into another job. You get some more money, then you have to bring different contractors. They start doing a different type of job. So these are some of the mistakes that we made in the past. But once you get the money, what can you do? You have to make the work continue. Now, what we try to do is make sure we raise the money first. When we've got the full money, we start the work. You know, maybe little things that we will do in, in, uh, uh, as soon as we get a bit of money. Like, for example, put a wall around the... the um, put a wall around the building and stuff like that. That's, that's a stando dando, you know what I mean? Put a gate, put a door... But in regards to the construction, we try to wait until we've got at least more than half of the money before we start. Because, bro, it's too risky, man. When you've got good builders, they start, everything's going smooth. Then a new team comes on, they start doing different stuff. SubhanAllah, it's just fit now. So from the experience from our previous work, we kind of know what we need to do to get a good job, good job done. So like, even if you look at the, the primary school that we built, that's the best building we've got in, in, in Spot Academy at the moment. It's not completely finished. The building's finished. They're just doing the plastering. All we have to do is do the finishing now. All we have to put is the windows, the doors, and the tiles and paint it, and it's done. But if you look at the construction, look inside, that's probably the best building. No, it is the best building that we have at, at Spot Academy at the moment, you know, and that's due to us raising that money last year, having all the money, and being able to do everything at one time. So with regards to the education that the, the girls are going to get, is it going to be a similar structure to what the boys are getting uh, right now? So we're talking like the Quran lessons, the Islamic studies, and then, and then really focusing also on getting like the state-of-the-art secular studies uh, as well. 
Yeah, bro. I, always, our intention is always to do things um, 360, do everything as, as much as we can. You know what I mean? Like, so, for example, having like the Islamic side, of course, letting them learn Quran, letting them learn Sunnah, etc. And also letting them learn secular studies because it's so important. Yes, we believe that it's, it's important to, to memorize Quran and learn Quran. I, I'm 100% with that. And we try to implement that to the best of our ability. But also, the young kids need to know how to read and write, bro. In the times that we're living in now, if you're going to work, if you can't read and write, what, what type of employment are you going to get, you know? So we make sure we invest in these type of things so that these children have these type of... Um, will are able to know how to read and write and be able to go into a job interview and know how to conduct themselves, you know? And this is what we want to do. We want to make the school like a training center, you know? We want to prepare people for job roles, for interviews, all these type of things, because we've got loads of people who are unemployed in our community, and we know with a little push, a little help, they'll be able to go to certain places, whether it's hotels and stuff like that, and be able to get get jobs, whether it's cleaning jobs, whatever. It don't matter whatever it is, but when you go to certain positions, you have to know how to fill out an application form. You know, you have to know how to do this. And many of the people in our community don't know how to do these basic things. So I feel like it's going to be like, our school is going to be like a, a bright light for the community because everyone in that community, especially the women, are going to benefit from it, you know, so I can see them holding on to it very tight. So uh, shifting gear slightly, I, I do want to also speak about the um, the orphan uh, the orphan sponsorship as well. But just before we do, uh, as you know, we had Muslim Bilal on two or three episodes ago. And one of the things that he mentioned was, um, you know, a lot of the brothers in the community who are raised in South London around the same era as him and, and, and you guys and kind of where they're at now. He's talking about yourself, talking about Musa, um, talking about Ismail and um the, uh, and a lot of people mention this especially with regards to you and the spot project and I know that you yourself never uh, enjoy it or, or you never talk about it anyway and uh, you just focus on what's ahead and, and you focus on the fact that you've got a lot more work to do however um, being that you have come from um, one lifestyle and now you're in another lifestyle do you allow yourself to reflect or, or not ever on that, on, that, on that growth or do you just do you only focus on okay I've still got a lot more work to do no, bro, I've got to reflect. I've got to reflect. I can't be too hard on myself. I know where I come from, from the streets. You know, I was living a completely different lifestyle before I came to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I have to reflect on that because if I don't, sometimes I can put unnecessary pressure on myself. I know as a Muslim, I'm not doing enough. I know my sins. I know the mistakes that I make, you know. But if I, if I, if I, if I flash back to the life that I was living before, I can't even recognise the person I've become today. You know, I never could imagine I'd be doing these type of things, you know. Whereas before we were doing maybe certain things to, to harm people, <laughs> now we're doing things to help people, you know, whether it was the way we were making money or things that we were encountering on the streets and whatnot, to be doing the things that we're doing now, it's amazing. And obviously, I'm, I'm not saying this in a way to praise myself because, well, like, bro, I could be doing all this and I meet Allah to Allah, Allah don't accept none of it. So it's, when, you're, when, you're, when you're doing good actions or you're working for the sake of Allah, you should never be too confident. doesn't mean that you should be like, you know what, don't have hope in Allah because I always have got hope in Allah. But don't be like, rah, I've got this in the back. Yes, when I meet Allah, I'm guaranteed. There's no guarantee, bro. There's no guarantee. You know what I mean? There's no guarantee. So, But in regards to your main question, yeah, of course I reflect. Sometimes I... Well, like the other day, I was um, just driving down um, Wharf Road and I was just looking at the area and I was just like, subhanAllah, this was my strip, this was my area. And I just, it's like, I was driving and my mom, I was, I was zoned out, bro. Like, I was like, you know, like I was, like I was having a dream. Like, subhanAllah, do you know the stuff that I used to do, like the stuff that we used to be doing around these areas. And now I'm doing this, it's crazy, you know. That's why I love the statement you planned, but Allah Ta'ala is the best of planners because... If you would have told me 20 years ago that I'll be doing this, bro, I would have laughed my head off. Even, bro, I can even remember when people used to tell me about Islam. I was just like, this this is mad, bro. You think I'm going to give up all my life to start worshipping God and all that? You're crazy. Like, I just used to think people who, who think like this are mad, you know. And now I'm, I'm trying my best to worship, worship the creator of the heavens and the earth and trying to do good deeds and worrying about my bad deeds and stuff like that. Whereas my life before, I was more, I was concerned about dunya, making money, um, girls, jewelry, cars, all this crap, you know what I mean, raving, enjoying my life and now I'm living the complete opposite, you know, in Africa, helping poor people, sitting with poor people, breaking bread, cracking joke, drinking tea with poor people, things that I never would have thought <laughs> I would have been doing back in the day. So, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah, you know, that we, we, we get the opportunity to do these type of things and alhamdulillah, I'm happy that Allah has given me the opportunity to help people because, bro, 
one thing I always tell people, there's nothing like helping somebody who can't do anything for you because you just feel so, you feel like I'm doing it for the right cause. Like, what can this person do for me? Can't do anything for me. You know, there's nothing, there's no payback. There's no payback. Like, obviously, yes, someone, you might help someone today and then maybe they come back 20 years, they, they might become something. But when you're looking at the situation at hand and you're helping someone for the sake of Allah and you know, you believe, like, there's, there's nothing this individual can do for me. It's, it's, it's really nice, you know, to, 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 to do things to help our fellow human beings and people who, 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 who need help. So definitely, bro, I reflect, I reflect, man. It's not easy phase. Like some of the demons that, some of the thoughts that go through my mind to this day, bro, it's not normal. It's not normal, I will lie, like, I chat to Musa, I chat to MB, I chat to Lord, bro, like, some of the thoughts, some of the things that go from my mind, even I have to say, I'm going to be like, what, what's this? You know, what's this? It's, it's crazy, but every day we're working, we're working to, you know, purify myself and try to improve myself as a Muslim and try to improve myself as a human being, bro. That's, that's, that's important as well, you know, very important because, like I said, the lifestyle we were living before, was horrid bro horrid it was nasty like when you reflect about some of the things that you used to do you'd, even sometimes i think to myself how did i used to do that like and had no shame you know when you do things and you're just like bro even now i see some people do things they're like how did they do that how like this person crazy like didn't have no shame so i have to look at the things i used to do and i think i did this and i didn't have a care in the world like subhanallah so alhamdulillah man always alhamdulillah for islam you know alhamdulillah trust me alhamdulillah um Let's talk about orphan. Uh, let's talk about the uh, orphan campaign that we've also got going on uh, in yeah. spot. Um, so that's the girls' school, and the girls' school is what. Um, uh, by the way, um, anyone who's listening to this, who 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 does want to donate to the girls' school, um, the, the the campaign is live, and you can go to spotproject.org forward slash freshly grounded, and you can donate to it now. Uh, our target is ten thousand pound, and inshallah, I'm going to be keeping a close eye on it because if we have the ability to, I'm going to do everything I can in my power to ensure that I'm bugging Abu Bakr to to increase that target because. Uh, as um, as precedent goes with the freshly grounded uh, listeners, I think in the first year we managed to raise about five thousand. In the second year, it was about eight thousand, and I think in the third year it was ten. That's 000. more than that. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than I think. It, I think it was the second year you raised about eight thousand. I think about yeah, seven thousand. Yeah, I think, something, I think something, the second yeah, year was eight, that, yeah. and then I think the third year was ten. I believe. I might, yeah, yeah, I might be that's wrong. Correct, yeah. So just uh, you're just just under ten. It's nine thousand something something something. You're just under ten, just about there. So listen, we want to inshallah. I think that um, uh, no doubt. Um, so even let's take the eight thousand pound one for example. Eight thousand pound was raised um, two years ago, and Alhamdulillah, Fresh Uganda has grown a lot in the viewership and stuff uh, since then. So inshallah, I pray that we can um, smash the target of ten thousand very very quickly. And also, um, yeah, but but it's something that, that that everyone has to do together. Something that we have to come together. And and everyone who's listening to this, if they all kind of decide that I'm going to make a difference in some way, even if it's five pound, it will make the biggest difference in the world. Um, and the truth is, to be honest. With the amount of people who listen uh, kind of across all platforms on a monthly basis, um, if, if everybody gave uh, uh, like uh, even just one pound, if everyone listens to this gave a pound and didn't think, oh, now my money's not going to matter. As, if everybody did that, we'd um, be, have enough money to build a girl school. Forget, forget mm. like the 10,000 pounds. If everyone listening just gave a pound, and I think that on, on different softwares and stuff, um, there has to be like a minimum amount so that they can process it. So I believe the minimum amount is five pounds. But even if everybody gave five pounds, we'd have enough money to um, be able to both build and, and run the girls' school. So don't belittle um, how, uh, kind of making a difference. Um, anyway, back, you know back, what? We have to. Go ahead. Just, just the one thing as well, just, just remember as well, at the end of the day, we, we as human beings as well, especially as Muslims as well, we have to do things what's going to benefit us in this life and hereafter. So when you're donating to these schools, you don't think about spot or you don't think about anyone else, but think about yourself. Think about that you're doing something that potentially can help you when you meet your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's, 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 the, that's the most important thing when it's all said and done, because we're here today, we're gone tomorrow. You know, and this is why I keep telling people like, well, like, alhamdulillah, some of us have got some good friends, got some good people who are close to us that if we pass away today, they set up GoFundMe pages, just giving pages, give bright pages and they raise money for them. But a lot of us don't have that opportunity. Mm. You know, why we're alive today? Why are you going to waste time? Get it, get it, get in where you fit. In. You know, see a campaign, see a project, whether it's spot, whether it's another project, donate, support it, do what you can so that at least you you've done something while you were alive you know 
or lie and this is this is so important because subhanallah when you see some like through this coronavirus um since it's happened bro every day bro every day i go onto facebook or i go onto twitter and all i see is my father passed away my mom mm -hmm. passed away my brother passed away I'm like, it's too much bro mm -hmm. it's too much i don't know like it's for me it's just like whoa it's not easy act so well, i advise everyone try and do something that's going to help you on that day because it's a reality you know subhanallah man it just made me reflect on um some ayat in uh, some ayat I'm reading right now in Surah um, Qalam where Allah is telling the story about the, the, the farmers who kind of were restricting the poor from um, from kind of taking the crops uh, but I don't know the story in depth for us I won't go into it but it made me reflect on, on that because it's true because you're able to help people who are less um, uh, able than you in a financial in a financial remit mm. when we have that and we don't want to be of those people who are stopping you know are, are be, uh, we have the means to, to help and we're almost like stopping them in their tracks uh, to help Faisal, let me cut you there sorry yeah. even what you're saying sorry to cut you even well, last night yeah I was reflecting on something and it would, would taste on my eyes yeah I said like a lot of times yeah when we're in Gambia we're helping people like we go to like people's houses we um what do you call it we're giving them feeding you know we got our zakat project every month we're mm -hmm. distributing zakat so we've got like x amount of people on our zakat program every month we go and give them rice sugar etc and well like, i said to myself yesterday like what's wrong with me many of these people yeah i go to their houses yeah bro even if you look at their roof their roof is collapsing bro many of the people we go to the houses their roof is collapsing they don't have proper doors a lot of these people don't have proper clothing Yes, we're doing something to help them. But I said to myself, and even me, myself, if I, if I look into my heart, I could do more. Even I go to some of these people, even if I just set up, a, I went onto my Instagram, I went on Twitter and I said, listen, I need 200 pounds. I need 200 pounds. Someone donate 200 pounds, 300 pounds so we can change the corrugate. I know for a fact people will do it. But it's like when you're doing good deeds, Shaitan sometimes, he, he tries to limit it, bro. He tries to limit it. Bro, you're doing something. Don't worry, man. Why are you... Okay, yeah, they need roof, but there's a hundred other people who need roofs as well. So you can't help everyone. Shaitan puts that in my mind. But I said to myself, all them people I came across and I used to have that feeling. I know myself. That hun them, them hundred houses could have been 70 houses now. Could have been 50 houses now. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Even if it could have been 10 houses, it's 10 houses better than no houses. You know what I mean? So trust me, we have to try our best, like... And be careful when we're when we're working for the sake of Allah, Shaitan, bro. I'm telling you, Faze, he comes and he's like, You're doing your hardest already. What's wrong with you? Give yourself a break, relax. You're doing your best. You, you can't do no better than this. Exhort your efforts, man, to help people. Well I man, trust me. Did you, say you, did you, you say when you distribute did you, did you say you distribute the cut every month? Yeah, so what, what happens with this spot project? When 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 people donate the cat, we don't use it on our organization. So what we do is we distribute the zakat every month. So we've got a database of people that we go around every single month and we give them food, we give them sugar. Um, I mean, sorry, we give them rice, we give them sugar, we give them oil, we give them soap, we give them potatoes, etc. That's every month for the last two years we've been doing that, bro. You know why you know I know think I mean? that's so powerful, Abu Bakr? Because um, I, was, I was just watching something this morning. Um, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Tim Humble, he's doing a, a zakat um, series on his on his YouTube channel where he's doing in, in depth. He's um, he's explaining the classical text from the scholars on the book of zakat. Yeah. And it's so in depth, bro. Like crazy. He's been going. He's been doing this series for such a long time. And it's still going like every couple of days releases a new video, like a half an hour long, hour long, just on like a page. Of I need to check it out, man. I need to watch yeah, it. Yeah, it's very, very good. Actually. And um what he said in last night in yesterday's class i'm not going to sit here and say that i've watched all of them i haven't but i just saw this snippet and he said oh man so powerful hit me he said that and it's exactly what we're talking about he goes um i can't i he goes there's, it's a, there's an issue with everyone giving as a cut in the time of ramadan and he said the problem with that that i'm seeing is that there's all these times in a year where the poor are not uh, are, are being this um uh, they, they're not being attended to because everyone wants to get their own reward in Ramadan. But he said, what is the qaida in zakat? The qaida in zakat is 
the f- the primary um, uh, priority is that you give it to the people who are in need when they're in need. Not, ah, oh, Islam oh. says my turn to get the most uh, reward out of it. He said there's not a single hadith that talks about giving your zakat in Ramadan. Uh, that yeah. hit me, bro. I think that, yeah, that hit me, bro. Just, um, because you think to yourself, you know, hey, bro, how, how, what are we thinking? Are we just thinking, right, let me get the most out of my reward. Let me do it in Ramadan. Or are we thinking, oh, it's, what about the people who aren't getting any in that, in that time? So the fact that you're giving it monthly, I had no idea that spot was giving us a cut monthly. I think it's amazing. But you know, one thing I think, one problem with that, I think a lot of people have been advised and I've seen a lot of like students on knowledge and stuff like that say this before, like give your zakat in Ramadan and stuff like that. So you maximize when you're on road or maybe charities as well always encourage that. Give your zakat in Ramadan, give your zakat in Ramadan. So I just think it's just kind of stamped into people's mind. Every Ramadan, I'm going to give my zakat. But like you said, it's so important, bro. Like, we can't be, like what, what, what the Sheikh said, we can't be just giving our zakat just in Ramadan. We need to give it, give it, give it throughout the year, you know, because so many people are suffering. Well, like, they need it, bro. They need it, you know. Without the zakat, bro, a lot of people suffer. And that's like, for us, anytime we get the zakat, we send it over and we distribute it every month, you know. Because we could distribute all at one time, but that's not that's not our thing. We'd rather have a program whereby we can get as much people as, as we can on the program and every month we give them something, you know. And Alhamdulillah, it's been working really, really well. So it's never been a thing for us like, you know, um, we do that just in Ramadan. Because, bro, even Zakat, I, t- I kid you not, for a lot of charities, Zakat, bro, Zakat is dangerous, man. Yeah, bro, I know, bro. Do you Brother, know what? When I came Zakat. to Gambia to speak to you about, uh, you were talking to me about it, bro, oh, I opened my eyes up, subhanAllah. It's such a big, um, uh, what's that word? Um, Brother? <laughs> amana. It's such a big Amana with Allah. Aki, see that Zakat? That Zakat will put you into Jahannam oh. fast. Better take your time. Subhan. Take your time. See Zakat? <laughs> <laughs> Aki, take your time. I tell brothers who start doing projects and stuff, you take your zakat, take your time. Take your time with zakat, bro. That zakat will come for you, Yomu Kayama, Aki. You have to take your time, bro. That's why we make sure that the zakat don't go on none of our projects, bro. We make it clear. People always smash us, bro. I want to donate my zakat to your building. Say, no, no, no. We don't take zakat for building. If you want to donate your zakat, just make sure you reference it. No problem, inshallah. We'll distribute your zakat, Fisa Bilillah. That's what we do. We don't take nothing from it. You know, we don't take nothing from it. The only thing we do as an organization, and we spoke to a sheikh about this, is that with the zakat, we take a small piece of the zakat to put fuel in the car. To put fuel in the car when we're distributing. So it covers everything. But in regards to people being paid or we take food or we use it for our projects, no way, no way. The only thing is we take a small piece to put fuel so we can distribute the zakat. In the car. If people, That's it to pe- cover the cost. People do often ask this question, so I'll, I'll ask it now uh, to save uh, to save the comments. Um, if someone does want to uh, donate their zakat um, to the project, mm. um, so that they can be be a part of that, you know, for food being yeah. distributed, where do they go? Do they just go to the spot project website? Yeah, just go to spot spot project dot org, and we've got a section on there zakat. Go on there, um, or do you call it? Donate your zakat, but I always, even with that, because you remember it's a computer, bro. Sometimes it can make mistakes. So I always tell people, no matter what, reference it. Yeah, reference, reference it, it. Reference it, reference it, because alhamdulillah, we've got a small team and we look through everything. So once we see the zakat money's been put, we put it we put it aside, we ship it straight away. So it's not it's not an issue for us. We send it to Gambia, the auntie deals with that. So we won't have no problems with that. We always tell people reference the zakat, reference the zakat to make our life easier because, bro, we're human beings. We can make mistakes. You might go on the website, the section zakat, and you might put your donation in and it doesn't inform us that it's a cat. Then we're in problems, you know? So we always tell people just try and reference it, inshallah, and then leave the rest with us. Fine. Um, I, I'm conscious of time. So let's just go on to, uh, I really want to talk about this uh, project with uh, this campaign for the uh, for the orphans. Uh, and then I just want to bring yeah. it back to the girls school because the girls school is something that I really, really, really want to focus on this Ramadan uh, with all of our listeners. So um, uh, what's, what's this orphan campaign? What's the limit? Uh, what's the target here and, and, and why? Okay, so over the last year, we've had so, over the last year, we've had so much people, bro begging us to don't to sponsor orphans it's been crazy like i kid you not i kid you not Faisal. we've got a waiting list of about 19 people who want to sponsor kids and alhamdulillah because they see our children they see how they're moving people people start to get a bond with our kids like they feel like they really know them so people are lining up to sponsor kids so over the last our last six months we've been working tidy behind the scenes looking for kids that need sponsorship 
And it's not an easy process because we have to go and do our research, bro. Anybody can come up and say they're an orphan. So there's so many things we have to do. Look for the death certificates. Go to their house. Check their situation. Because you have to remember as well, here, just because somebody says they're an orphan doesn't mean they're poor. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can meet a child who's got no parents and they're better off than me and you. <laughs> So you have to go and do your homework, you understand? And that takes time. So Alhamdulillah, our team has been working behind the scenes, researching, looking at children who are in dire need. And Alhamdulillah, because we do a lot of water projects, we go to a lot of villages. And then when we're in the villages, we inquire what's going on, da 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 and we find out about a lot of orphan children. So we've been built on our, building up our database. So currently, we have 50 orphans that need sponsors, that need to be sponsored. So we started a campaign that we actually put out today um, that we're trying to get the 50 kids sponsored so we so we're inviting people to um go on the page um is gibbright dot um gibbright dot com forward slash 50 orphans and you can set up a page on there it's only 600 pounds to sponsor an orphan for a year if you can't afford that you can join up with your friend two of your friends can go 300 pound 300 pound each or four of your friends can come together 150 150 150 150 and you can sponsor an orphan and you can just fundraise you don't have to it doesn't have to be literally out of your own money you could set up the page put it on, on on your facebook your instagram whatever and i think majority of us can um you know and raise 600 pound now what do we do for you in return with that 600 pound we guarantee you that your child will be sponsored for a year we cover their education their feeding their medical also you get to be able to speak to your child once a month you get to speak to your child once a month via video call and if the connection is not great then at least you'll get a video from a child and you can send a video back to your child also what we guarantee is that every every term Every time their term is over, you'll get a report about your child, how your child is doing in school. And also, the biggest thing at the end, if, if you will, if you want to, you can come actually to Gambia and you can visit the child they are sponsoring. So this is what we're offering for um, the £600, inshallah ta'ala. So, bro, it's a powerful, it's a powerful, it's a powerful project. It's a powerful project. And the more people get, in, get involved, then they see the reality. Because we're one of the organisations that offer this. I don't see many organisations that offer you sponsorship where you can speak to the child um you can see the child you can come and visit the child you get regular updates of the child and we can say we can say we could honestly say i, I can say this with, with my heart we can swear by allah only one only one person sponsors one child we're not like these organizations 20 people sponsoring one child 15 people want sponsor one child we never do these things wallahi allah is my witness we never do these things if you and your friends come together to sponsor the child you'll be the only person sponsoring that child for that year after the year, you decide whether you want to continue or you want to cancel your sponsorship, then we will look for another sponsor. But we don't play them games. We don't play them games. You know, we don't play them games. I don't want to go, I don't want to talk about any, any organisations, but we've seen it. One child being sponsored by 15 people. I've had, I've had flipping <laughs> charities sending me letters, bro. And they've sent it to other brothers. It's the same letter. Like, crazy stuff, bro. Crazy stuff. So, for me, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Anybody who looks after our orphan will be this close to me, Yom Qiyamah. All of us want that. We want to be close to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's an opportunity and it's a cheap opportunity as well. Even 10 people can come together and raise the money, £600, and sponsor a child for one year. And it's something that can benefit you in this life and the air after. So that's a campaign that we currently got going on at the moment. Aside with the um, um, the girls' school, inshallah. Oh, well, bro. Um, uh, so let's just round up the. Just to round up, uh, I just want a, a, a few points. Uh, I was um, thinking of um, a um, how soon, like inshallah, based on the funds, how how soon can we get started on building the girls' school? Is is everything like ready to get started when the funds are there? Okay, so what we what we we have a general rule in Gambia. If I'm honest with you, I'm not going to tell no lies. In the rainy season, we never build. We don't build. Unless the building's already started, we don't build in the rainy season. So generally speaking, when you're doing these campaigns and you're raising money, you know the money takes time to go through. So let's say, for example, um, we raise the money this, mu this month for Ramadan, so the end of May. Maybe we'll sit down with our contractor. He might say he wants to start the work, the foundation and stuff, because do building the f digging the foundation in the rainy season is good because they say the water, the rain, makes the foundation strong. So maybe we will do that. But in regards to the completing, doing the whole building, we always stop in the rainy season because the, prices, the price of materials always go up because it's difficult for trucks and, uh, and cement and all that to get to places. So they start doubling the price. And you know, in places like Gambia and Africa, there's no price control. You can go sit in the shop today, 
$300 seed, tomorrow you go, it's $200 seed, the next day it's $400 seed. It's hard to, to do things like that. So we have a general rule from my experience that we try not to build in the rainy season. So that's not, our, that's, that's, so if I'm honest with you, that's not our intention. So our idea is if we raise the money, we'll do the foundation, we'll complete the foundation, let the rainy season, let the, let, let the rainy season kick in. As soon as the rainy season's over, we'll when, complete, when the, we'll complete the rest of the over. building. So, you know, to be honest with you, end of September, October, that's when the rainy season finishes. But, bro, last year, I kid you not, I kid you not, the rainy season meant to start in July, bro. <laughs> it didn't start until the end of, near the end of August. They were, they were praying in the mosques, making dua for the rain to come. So, the world's changing, bro. All this environmental stuff, I don't know. I don't really know about all this stuff. I'm not in con- conspiracy theories too much, but definitely the world's changing, bro, because the rainy season was late. People were suffering last year in Gambia, bro. Well, why? Because they needed the rain for their crops and stuff like that. So, for us, on our side, what we would say is, as soon as the rainy season's done, then we'll finish the building as well. So, it shouldn't take... The, to do the construction, we normally give, our, give, give it a good six months. So our idea is maybe if we if we raise the money this Ramadan, I reckon by February our building will be finished. Inshallah. It'll Inshallah. be complete. Inshallah. Inshallah. That's the aim, Inshallah. Well, yeah. Jazakallah khair for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much right. for, for joining us. Um I know we normally have you for a longer time and we're able to talk about kind of um all different stuff and what's been going on since you were last on the episode. But um I thought it was very, very important to discuss the spot project, especially because we're gonna be inshallah raising money for it uh, throughout the month of Ramadan. Um, and so it, it was no worries. That came for. But inshallah, one day you know we can have you back and just have like a chilled out sesh. The one day we get you back in Africa, but we had it all yeah, planned, yeah, yeah. freshly grounded. I remember you thought you thought I was never going to come back after the first time. Uh, Be really, honest, bro. Listen, you know what? You know what? I need to get you on my channel. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not even on my channel. I need to interview you, and we need to talk about your first time in Gambia, yeah. mate. Because Lord have mercy, <laughs> I'll never forget that back, your then. first time in Gambia. Wow! Nah, I did, honestly, in my heart, I said this guy's never coming back here. <laughs> but I'm being like, you, you, you person, you, you went through the struggle. Yeah, I'm being like, I'm being like, don't had, worry, we'll, we'll had, have another had, show. We'll discuss that. Was, I had Sam protecting me from the stray dogs. I was like, every time the stray dog, like he just walked a bit in front. I was like, Sam, Sam, Sam. I was like, I don't want to embarrass myself in front of a back of them lot. So just come front me. <laughs> nah, bro. No, nah, to be honest with you, though. I'm gonna get you. We're gonna get you a spot project Instagram, and you're gonna talk about your first experience because what you went through, bro. A lot of people will go through the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Never been to Africa, never been to a foreign country, don't know what to expect, and I think they can learn a lot from your experience because even me, bro. Honest to God, I said to myself, Nah, man, Faisal can't handle this, man. He ain't coming back. But look at this, bro. You see, you've been back many times. It's light work for you. You come to Gambia, I leave you to do what you're doing. You're free now. You do what you You don't even need me there, no more. You feel Gambia without me, bro. <laughs> well, well, I'm it's I'm easy really for you looking now. forward to going back in Shalom. I mean, so, um, yeah, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Yeah. All right, but you stay there as well, bro. Yeah, I'm no just going to end the episode, but stay there because I need to um, tell you kind of how we're going to uh, get the content and stuff. Uh, Jazakallah okay, for everyone listening. No um, if you have made it this far, please, please, please remember um, to donate at spotproject.org forward slash freshly grounded. We have a target of £10,000, but I really, really, really want to smash that target out of the park. Um, I, I think there's no reason why we can't. Like I said, if we all just donate even the minimum amount, and those who can do- donate um, the maximum, which by the way is limitless, uh, then please do. Um, uh, but um, if we all kind of pull together, then inshallah we can we can make a, a massive massive difference. And you're going to be able to see the progress which you, you've been able to see uh, from the spot project from the very start. Uh, and we will see you on the next episode, inshallah. Assalamualaikum.